our little girls are just learning to count and I'll often hear them saying 26, 27, 28, 29, 2010 and I'll shout yes and we also call 2010 30 and the reason I don't correct this mistake is because later on when my daughters are doing something like subtraction and they're looking at say 30 subtract 17 they're going to need to recognize that 30 is actually 2010 because when they perform this there's nothing to subtract here so we need to steal from here we're going to make that 30 into a 20 and we're going to make that 10. So we've actually made 30 into 2010 here and now we can take 7 from 10 and get 3 and we can take 1 from 2 and get 1 and so it's a really important skill and I think we have to go back to it if we sort of say nah you're wrong it's 30 and we correct our kids too much. This has also been observed by Dr. Ann Rogers who's a bit of a place value guru here in Australia. Her observation is that kids are really great at being able to form numbers with base 10 blocks so say for example 375 we can do that by getting a 300s, 710s and 51s but when she asks for a different representation for example you know 37 10s and 51s the kids just meet her with blank stares and so what this demonstrates is that kids have been able to memorize a process and follow that but they haven't truly understood place value and so the game I'm about to show you helps to rectify this by giving kids a chance to discover different ways to represent numbers and also get them to think flexibly about place value and it's kind of like the t-shirts I wear in every one of my videos they're all designed to get people to quite literally stop and reflect to see something that they might not at first these all began when I was teaching my year eights about rotation and reflection and all of them change what they say when you look in the mirror so this turns into dork which is perfect for me so onto the game this game is called place value archery and what you've got to do is there's a target number so to play this game it's zero prep all you need to do is pick a target number between 300 and 1000 and then pick six random numbers between 1 and 10 I prefer to use cards because it uh, adds the randomness in there sometimes if you're picking them yourself it doesn't but you can easily write them down on the board so what we have to do with these six numbers is we have to put them in the slots here to make a number as close to 642 as we can now the really cool thing about this is that no matter which six numbers you pick here and no matter which target number you pick it's almost always certainly going to be you can get within four of that number so let's just go and demonstrate here I might put I'm going to try to get close so I might put uh, I don't know, the 4 and the 1 in the hundreds column that gives me 500 so you have to always add these numbers and you have to use all six that's they're the two rules so now I'm on 500 I still need another 142 and even for a kid to be able to tell you that that would be pretty nice as a teacher so I can get you know there's there's a another hundred almost um, that would be 150 let's go to 120 so if I put the 3 here with the 9 that'll be another 120 and if I put the 6 and the 8 together there's 14 so if we write this down at the end we've got 500s we've got 12 tens which is like 620 and we've got 14 ones and so we put that all together we end up with that's um, 620, 634. So our total here is pretty close, 634. But you can get better. In fact, you can get just one away from this target number. And I'll give you a moment if you want to pause the video and have a shot yourself, and then I'll explain how you can do that. Now you may have been experimenting with the six in the hundreds column once you do that you've only got 42 to play with here and it might not give you the flexibility you need so eventually you might try just say the four in the hundreds column so that means we need to put some pretty big numbers here in the tens column to make up the 200 that we need to get 600 so we might just whack a few in here if we put the nine and one in there there we're on 500 now and then if we put these two in as well this is going to make another 140 so here We've now got 400s and we've got 24 tens, so that's 640. And then the three left over makes 643. And so we've gotten within four of the target. 
and you know you've you've nailed it if you're within four of the target that's as close as you can get um, it's just this weird thing that any adjustment you make here will change the value by a multiple of nine because if, if we put say a three over here we're making this one 30 bigger and making this three less so there's a difference of 27 anyway that's a nerdy thing you don't need to know about that but um, you can also adjust this game you know instead of making hundreds tens and ones you can make this ones tenths and hundreds Here's two adaptation ideas to make it simpler or more accessible for kids. The first is to just have five cards and then the number between 40 and 200 as the target. The next adaptation would be to make uh, get rid of the hundreds column altogether and then only pick four cards. Now with only four cards you don't have as much flexibility and the choices will become a bit more obvious but they will still give kids practice at representing numbers differently. We will probably put this up online at games.thinksquared.com.au on the game suite very soon. And uh, otherwise, I would love for you to prove to me that there is a number. If you pick six cards and choose a number between 300 and 999 and prove to me that you can't get within four of that. If you can do that, I will send you something nice. Send me an email, andrew at thinksquared.com.au.